Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and it is the Inner Geekdom Tournament. Yet another match. What a tournament it's been so far. We've got two tournaments, Mark, and the Inner Geekdom following up a great Star Wars tournament. How are you feeling about this match coming up here? It's just more nerdy goodness, Christian. And if you saw the Star Wars tournament, you know that now when we get into Inner Geekdom, so many more movies, so many more franchises are in play. Billions and billions of dollars have been made by these movies we're about to ask questions about at the box office. But only one of these two competitors is going to advance in this tournament and get closer to the billion dollar prize. I'm being told we actually do not offer billion dollar cash prizes. That's in a couple of years from now. Uh, listen. One of the main things here of this season, it's all about the factions. And the factions have made some interesting moves all the way around, and no one can fall in that category more so than the inglorious one, Sam Levine, former commissioner, former singles and teams champion, is a student of the game, and he became a manager this year. And to his credit, and I knew it, his schedule was going to take him out a little bit. Doesn't mean he wasn't involved. He's been very, very involved this entire season. And what did he do? He said he was going to make some big moves, and he made some massive moves. He found himself some big-time, big-time firepower in Ethan Irwin. He made a trade for him. He got him on the team. But what else did he do? He went and he got himself Molly Damon in the Star Wars tournament, and then he made another surprising move, and he said, guess who my two competitors are in IG? Jen Kemp, the meme queen herself, and Janine the Machine playing in inner geekdom we've never seen her we've seen her in teams and singles with mark she's making her inner geekdom debut here today no it's been such a shock to our system christian because janine we know her for a variety of knowledge in the world of movies but when i think janine the machine i think maybe romantic comedies or comedies in general dramas those are the things that she's known for that's what she's kind of built her house upon so to speak but now in inner geekdom and christian there's not a lot of romantic comedy in the world of inner geekdom movies, there may be a Deadpool, chuckle here and there in Star Wars. There's Deadpool. the I love you, I know. But I mean, other than that, what are we looking at from Janine the Machine? She's going to show us a whole new world of knowledge, we think. Now, that's the one side of the coin. The other side is the Mad Hatter. That's right. John Humphrey, who became an absolute darling back in the first ever free for all. He won everybody's hearts. And then the real rejects this year went on a whole new run. Both Greg and John have been just beloved by the fans. Listen, beloved by this very uh, chairman uh, myself. I love these guys and I love John and I love uh, I just don't know what the hell he knows about inner geekdom. I have no idea what he knows. I know, he you know I, you he's know? always been a wild card to me. I have no idea what his strengths in anything are. I, right I know he's a nice guy. I know he, he gives good hugs when we're legally allowed to do that. He's got great hair. I have no idea what his strengths are. I know he's gotten a lot of points. He's great in free for alls. He's been helping his team tremendously, but I do not know what he's good at. So are we going to see one of those categories show up on the wheel for him today? Well, we don't know, but we know that he's a quirky individual and he fits in very well with the quirky Mercs because Koi Jandru, also another one, both of these teams, both the usual suspects and the quirky Mercs need a victory very, very badly. They need the three points. And if they can, somebody can get a knockout, they need that four points because Sam had to make all those moves and he lost his number one pick in uh, Drew McQueenie when McQueenie stepped down. He needs points and he knows he needs points. And can Janine beat... Uh, John Humphrey today, that's a big step for the usual suspects. Sam's a competitor. We know that. We've seen that before. And don't let the little kind of smile come like, well, everything's fine, buddy. He wants to win. I know the guy. He wants to win. He'll give you the, oh, no, of course not. He wants to win. And that's why he put Janine in. That's why he put Jen in. He, he, can, he sees it in him. He sees what he can what they can do. Yeah, it's very interesting how large retirement and the concept therein looms over this match. Because with Sam Levine, you always wonder, okay, well, did he retire? Was he just tired and he wanted to go to Del Boca Vista? Was he sick of competing? His recent moves clearly show me that he is not tired of competing, that this is what is now feeding his competitive fire, is being a manager. And with Koi, you, you talk about somebody who is custom made for the management position. He's a great leader. He's a great rallier of team camaraderie. But is John Humphrey going to be able to come through for him today? A lot of questions, Marks, on this match right now. And I am Mark as well. All right, I want to see how the, how we got here, but I will say about Koi Jandrew, and don't tell Sam this, Koi's probably my favorite person to deal with on the phone that's a manager. All right. Okay. <laughs> now, that the Quirky Mercs getting a lot of love from you today, not as much on the other side of the coin with the usual suspect. Not true. I gave Janine a lot of love. I think Janine's okay. one of the best computers we got. I don't know what she knows about inner geekdom, but if somebody's going to study, it's going to be Janine. All right, so uh, I'm sick of you, and I'm sick of me, so let's find out how we got here. Here we go. So you're probably surprised to see me in the inner geekdom tournament. Think about what you know about the machine. 
I'm not afraid of a challenge, and I know how to work hard. So let's do the damn thing for the usual suspects, because I don't believe in a no-win scenario. <laughs> I was just thinking about the draft. Janine! The Machine! Oh, I'm sorry. Did, did you guys not realize that she was a three-league player? Do you know what makes an inner geek room champion? Details. Uh, but I want to be very sincere and thank Koi because he doesn't tell me what to do, but he knows how to guide me. He's like a good therapist for the showdown. <laughs> yeah. Iron Man, Logan, The Vanisher, Fake Cat, Real Cat. You never know the information you might need, but you know who does know? John Humphrey. Koi, Koi, you gotta cancel the match, man. Remember that, uh, you know, that free for all a, a bit ago with John just kind of taking the whole thing by storm. Free for all, man. That was like three years, a month, and several days ago. Now, that have you seen Jenny play? She's got a cool nickname. I, I can't compete with that. We all know I've had a rough go at the showdown, but I like a new challenge. Unlike certain hit men I used to know. I am awful sorry that John Humphrey has to be the guy to face her in the first round. He's ready for anything. And frankly, he's gonna win this whole thing. Dude, I can't get inside her head more remote, man. How am I supposed to do that? I don't know anything about machinery. I don't think the quirky mercs are gonna pull this one out today because Janine tastes victory. And to my opponent, John Humphrey, much respect to you. But I know I can hang, and I'm about to prove it right now. I've been sleeping every night with the original copies on VHS, unedited by George Lucas, the creator who everyone hates now but doesn't hate because of Ryan Johnson. So come on, Puddy. Let's do this. He's got a team behind him that's gonna put him at number one. And yes, there's gonna be two number ones because John Humphrey and Greg Alba are both winning this whole thing. I don't know math. As you see, Mark, this is there's no bad blood here between the two managers or the two competitors. There isn't this kind of smack talking we've seen all over the internet. This is a classy game, but make no mistakes about it. They both want to win. Yeah, I, th this is going to be a lot of fun because Janine, when I saw what her background was, it, it's a very nice and machine friendly kind of background. John Humphrey, for all I know, the guy's been quarantined in the back of a guitar shop this entire time. So it's going to be really interesting to see how they play given their respective circumstances. Well, before we get to see both the competitors, we're going to hear from both the usual suspects, Captain, the usual suspects man himself, Sam Levine, and from the Quirky Mercs, Coy Jandrew. Gentlemen. Massive, massive match here. Sam, you got to be feeling nervous. You got to be feeling confident. How, I mean, what's it all? How are you feeling right now? I feel great. I mean, like I, I said before, I think it's the greatest gift that I ever got that I was able to snag Janine in the third round of that draft. She is a triple threat player. You can count on one hand the number of, of players in this league who are triple threat players. Um, so I, I feel so honored and delighted that Janine is playing with the usual suspects. I think she is absolutely going to change some minds about her overall strength as a player in today's match. All right. Excited to see it. Koi, uh, real quick here. John Humphrey, we've seen what he can do at the free-for-all. We've seen what he can do in teams but Inner Geekdom, I have to be honest, when you told me, here are my two players, it's the real rejects. They're going to be uh, the Inner Geekdom guys. I didn't know they had an interest in it. Is John Humphrey going to be a, a, a brand new star in the Inner Geekdom division? So what always surprised me was that they didn't play in the Inner Geekdom because I find that to be both of their strengths so consistently. When I see what they do well, when we have conversations outside of the game, when we have any sort of like social interaction, it's usually about things within the Inner Geekdom. So I just feel like it's a... Uh, it's a lack of, we just haven't seen it before. It's unprecedented ground. So I'm not worried. And I feel like they bring exactly what I see the quirky mercs as being. Like if there's anyone that's quirky and a mercenary in this game, it's John Humphreys. So this is the man I wanted in the intergeekdom. This is arguably the, the league that means the most to me. It's the only one I've played in. That's it's right. the only one I even have one put in put in and it's the only thing that i ever like invested myself in so i have a lot of investment in the inner geek team as much as i love all of the schmodown this is the one 
I was here for from the beginning. So for me, John Humphrey's been my guy. Greg Alba has been my guy. When I recruited them, I saw them as triple threats that just haven't had the chance to play yet. Uh, Sam, I got to go to you on this one because I know you're an experienced veteran of the stage. I know you've done stand up to much acclaim in your history. Does it give you any pause, your background versus Coy's background? Because Coy has clearly set up a diorama of the main room in the comedy store behind him. Does that make you feel like maybe you should have tried harder on your background? <laughs> You know, it does. Um, I spent uh, $28,000 on this usual suspect <laughs> wallpaper. And um, I have some regrets. Not no regrets, some. But if, if I had it to do over again, I probably would have gone with... Um, I probably would have gone with uh, Stand Up New York's backdrop. Yeah. Well, because Mark decides the winner, right? So I thought that I should appeal no, to the... Okay, so this is... Yeah. Absolutely. It's like America's Funniest Home Videos all over again. Listen, You're going uh, to my heart. Uh. Last question here for you. Um, there, Sam, you know, it's it. you've been getting every time I see you, whether it's on backstage or any of the uh, after shows, people ask you, you know, it, you have a former inner geekdom champion that you are engaged to. And mm -hmm. and and that, that has been really? very active talking to it's Kalinowski. No, no, <laughs> wow. It's, that's, wow. But you that who you've been. But she's been involved. Pushing has been around. She has been active. She was, I remember at the draft, she gave Janine a massive hug after you guys yeah. drafted her. How involved has Rachel been in the uh, in the inner geekdom preparation? And incredibly involved, um, you know, and it's not, and it's not because of her allegiance to me as her fiance. It is because one of the things that Rachel has always wanted is more female presence in this league, something I've always wanted, something you've always wanted. Uh, and it is one of her goals to make sure that not just the players on the usual suspects, but all the female players in the league have the basis of knowledge you need to get to that next level. So, I mean, I consider myself very lucky that uh, she is readily available to all of my players. But again, it's not just me and, and the usual suspects players that she wants to see succeed and do better. But uh, uh, certainly she and Janine have had plenty of study sessions plenty of good talk she's she's given her a lot of great tips and uh i think that that's she's invaluable um not just to me and janine but to any of the wonderful young ladies in the in the league who are looking for a little bit of guidance well said all right we're going to about to start this match but last thing here for you coy before we drop off uh usual suspects and Berkey mercs in desperate need for some points here how crucial is this today and will there be any hard feelings here uh with uh sam well, I, I'm so invested in this this particular match because it's intergeeked and because this has been what I wanted to see John do. Because as I was saying before, this is I, I'm I'm super invested. And as far as I haven't gotten to play Sam yet this season, so I, I generally am just excited. I feel like we're both in a in a must win scenario, which is where I like to be. I'm a Patriots fan. I'm sorry to all of my fans I just lost. Uh, we're a fourth quarter player. Like I, you know, this is where I want to be. Brady really shows up late in the game. The Red Sox, we're real good at losing until we win. So I feel like I'm repping Boston by being the underdog in this match that uh, I don't have a locker room guy, but I feel like I'll do okay when this all works out. Sam, I only hear you say mean things when Boston's brought up. Any any thoughts? You know, look, uh, I, I could go either way on this match. The points would be nice. Uh, but as long as I can get a few pot shots into Boston, sure. Um, sure. Look, here's, here's what up. it comes Here down to. Yeah, here's what it comes down to. Uh, if we win today, I think it's amazing. I'll be incredibly proud of Janine and all the hard work she's put in. And if we lose, I'm going to take an axe to this wall and you will never see it again. Like the shining itself. All right. Thank you to Coy and to Sam. Good luck, gentlemen. Looking forward to the match. All right, Thanks. here we are going to drop these guys out here. All Richard, right. They seem just as curious as we do as to how their competitors are going to perform here today. I think they're confident. I think they're both confident, but of course, they've never played before in this division. So they're excited for them. I believe that they've been prepping them. And now it all comes down to this. Mark, are you ready? I am ready is John Humphrey and Janine. Are they going to be Jared Stidham or are they going to be Tom Brady? We're about to find out. Say the words, Christian. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia showdown. Introducing first, representing the quirky Burks, making his showdown inner geekdom debut. He is the 2017 Free For All MVP, the Mad Hatter, John Humphreys. Wait, 
that's just a board. That's just a board with a quirky merch. There he is, the ladies. Well, I feel like yeah, I had to make some kind of entrance, and there's not really much I can do in the corner of this room. So I was like, I'll create suspense. I like what you're doing there. I like the and setup. And branding. I like it. Uh, how you feeling? I am nervous but excited because, uh, I mean, you know, as terrified as I must have come across in the pregame, uh, I'm, we're ready to play, and uh, I think Koi is right, if I may speak confidently. You know, uh, Greg and I, we take in, you know, Marvel, DC, you know, all this geek stuff all day, and I feel like, even if I don't do great today, I feel like uh, I could bring some heat in the inner geek. Team. I got a couple areas of expertise. Okay, John, I want to ask you, because you got two really cool-looking guitars behind you, so if you had to play this match through a guitar, which one would you choose? Are you going acoustic, or are you going that more Darth Maul electric-looking one? I would I would have to go with the Darth Maul electric one. Love I it. mean, it, it's no contest. Can you actually play those? Uh, you know, if you if you edit it right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The same way, the same way uh, George Carlin can. <laughs> Good luck to you, my friend. We'll see you in just a second here. <laughs> and his opponent, representing the usual suspects, making her inner geekdom debut, Janine the Machine. Janine the Machine. I love that arm. I love it. <laughs> Thank the you. The step <laughs> back there. Look at that step. <laughs> Are you excited? Oh, thank you. I'm very excited. It's definitely something new, but I was super excited for this challenge. So bring it on. Yeah, Janine, that glove, it reminds Christian and I of the power glove. You're probably too young to remember that great apparatus that <laughs> yeah. came with the original Nintendo. Have you ever put one on? It feels amazing. I have not, but this comes pretty close, I, I would think. I would I would hope. It's absolutely great. Now, you know, Janine, uh, talking to your manager about it, and obviously you've been asked questions about it. Look, you've said it. I can't remember what show. It might have been the rundown. You were on, and they were asking you about the Inner Geekdom, and you said, look, man, I hang out with some Inner Geekdom ballers. I hang out with Smets, my, my, my well, not necessarily co-manager, but advisor, if you will. Rachel Cushing is one of the greatest Inner Geekdom players of all time. And, and then Brandon Hanna and you used to have a relationship, so obviously you used to help him study for stuff. Yeah. <laughs> You've been involved in the inner kingdom. Are you, is, is this somewhere that maybe you haven't uh, flexed your muscles yet? Um, yeah, I mean, in kind of helping other inner geeks and players study, I've kind of found that I had a pretty strong base to begin with um, and just some other things I really needed to work on and kind of with everything going on right now, I knew this would probably be the only time I'd have to really kind of invest that time into it. Um, and, you know, I've had a rocky road with singles, so I felt like, you know, this is my third year. It's time to delve into something new and really challenge myself and push myself. So I was ready for it. I'm not shy. I'm not afraid of hard work. So I was definitely ready to put myself well, into glad, this. Glad to have you. And now we're going to bring back John Humphrey here <laughs> as they share the screen together. Mark, we get into round number one. How's it work? Round number one, kids. That's right. We are here. It is just about time. Round number one in the Inner Geekdom format features 10 questions from 10 different corners of movie trivia schmodown, Inner Geekdom filled know how. Each question is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round number one. As soon as we ask the question, please use whatever writing utensil you have handy and whatever writing tablet you have handy. And please write down your best attempt at the answer within that. 15 second window as soon as we address you by name please reveal what you wrote on your tablet to your camera at the same time you verbalize your answer into the microphone you each have three usages of the jte rule throughout the duration of the match if you're not sure you heard a question right you want to buy yourself some time for dramatic purposes use the jte rule you also each have one challenge to be used by your manager at any point throughout the three round match christian I crushed it once again. You did. All right, we start with John Humphrey. Are you ready? I kind of. <laughs> it's machine. Let's do this. <laughs> then let's get ready to schmo down. Here we go. We're going to go 10 questions. Round number one. We start with the first one in the category of the MCU. Which member of S.H.I.E.L.D. is tasked with tracking down the Hulk at the beginning of 2012's The Avengers? Wow, you, you talk about a thankless job, Christian. If somebody came to you and was like, here's $10 million, go find the Incredible Hulk, what do you say? Um, I'd probably look for him and then hide. Five, four, It's a good strategy. 
two, one. Pens down. We start with John Humphrey. Natasha Romanov, a.k.a. Black Widow? Yes. And Janine? Black Widow. That's correct. We're going to go one point apiece. All right. Next question, Mark. Your next question is in the world of Star Wars. Yay. Remember our tournament? It was a lot of fun. It was live on Twitch. Check it out. The question, what is the name, the first name, of Anakin Skywalker's mother? Did you say to me? I, it was It was not about your mom. Oh, it wasn't? No, but I bet I bet Anakin got teased about that quite a bit. And five, four, three, two, one. We start with Janine. Me. That's correct. And John. Almost. I wrote Anna Queen. Anna Queen. <laughs> Anna Queen is not right. No. Uh, and he's her kin. It makes total sense. For now, the spelling is uh, S H M I, but that's kind of sound, it's close enough in sound. We're gonna we're gonna give Janine the, the point. All right, next question. All right, so we go to number three, Middle Earth. Dominic Monaghan plays what character in Lord of the Rings films? Yeah, you know, Christian. John Bringer, that's an interesting point. Why, like, wouldn't you assume Anakin's mom is just named Anne? Yeah, it should be. You would you would think. Kin of Anne? But she went with Shmi. Well, it's like, she likes, she's a Peter Pan fan. I don't know. Is that George Lucas Five, being tired? Four, three, two, call it Shmi. one. Pens down, please. And John. He's Mary. Mary is correct. And Machine. Mary. There we go. Machine has not missed. Three to two, Janine the Machine. All right, next. All right, one. move on to your next category. That is in the world of DC movies. DC movies could be anything as far back as the first Superman movie. We're actually going to go with Superman Returns. In that <laughs> film, Superman Returns, who plays Richard White, Harry's nephew and Lois's new fiance? This was a very uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I think kind of a dull move. Yeah, but the when you hear the John Williams score when he's oh, yeah. hanging out on the airplane, on, early, that's awesome. Five, four, three, two, and one. Pens down, Janine. James Marston. That is correct. And John. Oh dang! I wrote James Con. <laughs> oh wow! I thought I thought of the actual Superman too when you said Superman Returns. Damn. It's a I different went movie and everything. Different movie. James Conn in that role would be very interesting, but I don't think it would fit. Bad casting. All right, next question. Marvel films. Marvel films. To impress Mary Jane, what does Peter Parker plan on buying with the money he will receive from winning a wrestling match in Spider Man? Can you imagine uh, Lois introducing her family to her new fiance played by James Conn? Hey, this is my guy, Sonny. <laughs> a little old for you <laughs> and five four three two one pens down please and we start with uh who we start with here sorry john uh i wrote a mustang or a super sweet car that works and janine a car that's right okay janine the machine she's perfect so far mark five to three as we get into our next question she certainly is, and this next category has been known to fell some inner geekdom competitors, and that is the wizarding world of Harry Potter. Harry Question. Potter. At the end of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, who was awarded 10 points for the bravery of standing up to their friends? Oh, look at, look at who got new toys. What happened? No? <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And we start with Janine. Neville Longbottom. Yes, and John. I also put Neville Longbottom. And we will now see ourselves with a six to four score. The machine still with the lead here as we get to our next question. I'm just as okay as Koi had hoped. Okay, <laughs> you are. Star Trek. Star Trek is our next one. Who plays... Hikaru Sulu in 2009's Star Trek. Uh, you and I saw this and we both walked out of the theater like, holy crap, us Star Wars fans like the Star Trek movie. Who would have thunk it? Can you remember who we saw it with? Five, four. Is that for me? Three, <laughs> two, 
two. Tom Connolly. One, no. Pens down. And we go with uh, John. John Cho. Yes, it is. And Janine. John Cho. Janine, the machine has not missed. Eight to six. Humphrey, though, only down by two as we find ourselves into question number eight, Mark. I guess I'll just remain in suspense as to who we saw that movie with. Your I category. I think I saw it twice. In the world of the... De- <laughs> You've been cheating on me? In your category. <laughs> in the world of the DCEU. And that question. According to 2017's Justice League, the Whedon Cut, what triggered the reactivation of the mother boxes? Sounds like a 80s show that would have been on uh, MTV. The mother box. Ooh. <laughs> Five. It's just so many ways to Four. read into that. Three. I'm out. Two. One. Pens down, please. And Janine. Don't have it. Don't have it. All right. So next, uh, John. The resurrection of Superman. Looking for the, the death of Superman. Death. Mm. death of Superman. Well, he had to die to get resurrected. Yeah, but we're losing the actual <laughs> Very death. true. Is you're in the you're in the neighborhood. All right, so machine misses her first one, seven five, still with a two point lead. Next one, heroes and villains. In how many films in the X Men franchise did Michael Fassbender appear as Magneto? Uh, you know, Janine's in this contest, Christian. Uh, quite the accomplished artist. I actually own a couple of her pieces uh, centered around Batgirl. So. Check out Janine's artwork wherever you can. Give them a little extra here. And you know, John is talented too. Five, four. Thanks, Xander Drax. Three, two, one. Pens down, please. And we start with John. Four. That is correct. Janine. Four. There we go. So Janine only missed one. She got that one. Nine, seven. 9-7, 9-7, because Humphrey got it as well. 9-7 as we get to our final question in round number one. And that is in the category of mixed bag. Reach your hand deep in the mixed bag. Could be DC, could be Marvel, could be a Hobbit. Who knows what the hell is in there? Your question for a point. What comic book movie has the following cast? Bruce Willis, Jessica Alba, Mickey Rourke, Rosario Dawson, and Clive Owen. I just see Clive Owen and I just saw him in uh, some Showtime movie recently. So, he was in uh, this season of Curb Your Enthusiasm. Look at that. And well, five. Him and John Hamm were great. Four, three, two, one. Janine? Sin City. You get it. And John? Yep, Sin City. We see ourselves nine to seven. What a first round for two competitors who have not played in Inner Geekdom before. You got to give it up to John Humphrey, but. Really, spotlight's got to be on Janine here as she opens up big with those uh, two big points here. But I'm going to throw John just for a second. We're going to throw him out and bring in Sam as we get into the rules of round number two. Here we go, Mark. Yeah, that's right, Christian. That robot hand working wonders for Janine so far. Let's see how it bears in round number two, where she will be using her electronic hand to spin an electronic wheel. It's back, ladies and gentlemen. It's better than ever. It's smooth, and it features 12 different wedges. You have 10 categories, and then you also have opponent's choice and spinner's choice. Once a category is settled upon, because this is inner geekdom, Competitor will be asked five questions. Each question's worth two points. No penalty for missing a question. However, stealing is available in round number two. So if you're not sure of the answer, ask us for multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which we promise is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question goes down to one. Christian, both competitors retain their three usages of the JTE rule and their challenge. So as we look at the electronic wheel, to point out that it's a sponsored wheel, ladies and gentlemen, and that is sponsored by none other than First Rate Nate. How about a hand, everybody, wherever you're watching this from, make it loud for First Rate Nate. You can check him out. Uh, And uh, if you want to check out the Patreon, if you want to maybe have my name uh, saying your name on a Schmodown, it's like which tier is right for you. I recovered just fine. Nate's preferred wheel slices today were Star Wars and Middle Earth. Once again, first rate, Nate, you are first rate in my book. All right, because Janine, you have yourself a lead here. You can choose to go first or you can defer and we can bring back uh, John and Coy. Let's you speak it out with your manager if you want. 
Janine, we've discussed this, but as always, the decision is yours. What would you like to do? Um, I think I will defer. All right, you're going to defer. All right. Well, thank you, Janine. Thank you, Sam. We're going to drop you guys out for just a second here. We're going to bring in these two characters. Here we go. Um, all right. So we're going to bring the wheel up here. Coy and John. Coy, you can discuss with John um, after he spins, after we get this first spin in here. Here we go. All right. All right. Humphrey, wishing it, wanting it, doing it. We don't know what he's good at, what he's bad at. We have, we have no idea. So we're going to find I mean, out. he was good at pretty much every question in the first round. Wizarding World. Let's keep Wizarding World. I'm down. You're down. Koi, Koi, are you okay with that? I, I agree. It's definitely, yep. All right. I fully let's, let's support your choice. All right. All right. <laughs> support the choice. All right. We're going to drop Koi out of here. And now John Humphrey will be answering questions from the Wizarding World here. Mark, are you ready to uh, ask some questions to... Hit that music, Christian. It's the Wizarding World. All right. I don't know if we get sued for that or whatever, but... No, it's not. It's, not, it's actually... That's made by... Uh, our own David B. That's not Harry Potter music. Gosh, is there anything David B. can't do? Mm -hmm. uh, another mean guitar player, John Humphrey, is about to have five questions in the Wizarding World. John, your first question for two points or one if you ask for multiple choice. Oops, hold on a second. Hold on. Yeah, there we go. We brought her back. Just want to make sure that Janine is back. Janine, so just want to you know, remind everybody, yep, well, during uh, John's questions, if everybody can keep their hands up there. Thank you so much. And same. Here we go. Next. Uh, all right, Mark, go ahead, Mark. Start over. Ah, I've been let out of my dungeon underneath the stairs. Here we go. Your first question of five. What creature do Harry and Luna bond over both being able to see in the Order of the Phoenix? Thestrals. Two points for John Humphrey, and we are tied at nine. Okay, John, your next question. In the Wizarding World, in The Crimes of Grindelwald, which beast does Newt use to help him track Tina when they arrive in Paris? A Niffler. Of course you use a Niffler when tracking something in Paris. <laughs> this is so much better without a crowd and, and energy in the room. This is great. <laughs> I know. You, get, you, hit, you finally have one of these big, huge games. Like, I know a lot of stuff. And it's just like me and Ellis cheering you on. Oh, yeah. hey, it's still intimidating, though. It's good. <laughs> don't worry. I, I'm pretty sure somewhere first rate Nate is going crazy watching you. So that's good. Uh, your next question, John. This is your third of five in Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Who finds Harry in Nocturne Alley and helps him get out? Hagrid. He's still perfect in round number two, Christian. Really impressive so far. Two left. All right, John, your penultimate question in the Wizarding World. What is the name, Ghost, of House Slytherin? Need the name of the ghost. The Bloody Baron? It is wow. the Bloody Baron. That sounds like a delicious hamburger joint, and it's also two more points for John Humphrey. Very impressive so far for John Humphrey having an amazing round in the in the Wizarding World. Yeah, that's Thank right. you, One Christian. Welcome. Needed it the most. Your uh, next question, John. This is also your last question. And if I can just ask the crowd to please uh, silence uh, so John can hear me. In the Half-Blood Prince, who makes an unbreakable vow with Snape? Narcissa Malfoy, Draco's mother. Christian, he had a perfect round number two. That is good for 10 wow. points. And he enjoys a 17 to 9 lead all of a sudden over Janine the Machine. That was an incredible 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 round very impressive by john humphrey who confident in wizarding world and we obviously see why that was great stuff there by john all right john we're going to drop you out here now um and we're going to bring back sam levine and let's get that wheel up there again and now it's time for janine you guys can discuss during the actual spin here we go spin it in the wheel communicating with Janine's right hand. Star Trek. I'll spin again. Okay, spin again. again. Here we go. This is it. Whatever you get here, got to go with. Here it is. Well, look at the Wizarding World. Wait, is this your first time playing, Christian? <laughs> <laughs> well done. And of course, it's going to land on it. Is it no DC? Uh, DCEU. It is. All right, DCEU, Janine. All right, Janine, All right. you got this. All right, we're going to drop Sam out. We're going to bring back uh, John. Here we go. Janine, you have five questions in the world of DCEU. Are you ready? Yes. Here we go. Question one. 
Clark Kent goes by what fake name when he meets Lois Lane in the icy region of Canada in Man of Steel? Multiple choice. Is it A, Joe, B, Kurt, C, Dan, D, Jerry? Joe. That's correct for one point. All right, here is the second one. When young Darla turns into an adult superhero at the end of Shazam, what is her primary metahuman ability? Multiple choice. Is it A, super strength, B, invulnerability, C, super breath, D, super speed? Super strength. It's incorrect. John, the choices are A, super strength, B, invulnerability, C, super breath, D, super speed. Super speed? That's correct for a one-point steal. All right, here is question number three. By what nickname? Do the British refer to the scientist that creates chemical weapons for the Germans in Wonder Woman? Multiple choice. Is it A, Dr. Gas, B, Dr. Poison, D, Dr. Terror, D, Ms. Poison? Dr. Poison. For one point. All right, Chris, she's multiple choicing her way around this round. Okay, she could really use a couple two-point hits to close it out. All right, so we're getting, this is question number four. In Aquaman, who voices the Brian King? Uh, Jaiman Hansu. It's incorrect for the steal. Uh, repeat the question. It's your first one. In Aquaman, who voices the Brian King? Uh, Jermaine Clement. Looking for John Reese Davies. John Reese Davies. Same difference. <laughs> True. All right. Here's Family. the final question here. This is the fifth and final question, Janine, in this round. Here we go. In Justice League, which member of the league accidentally shoots at Superman after he has come back to life, prompting him to attack the group? Five, four. Cyborg. That's correct for two points. All right. At the end of round number two, John Humphrey, because of his excellent, excellent round, sees himself within five here. It is 18, 13, five points as he, we get into round number three. That was a big two pointer by Janine, gets herself within five, but it is now the third and final round. Mark, how does it go? That's right. And who would have thought that we'd be saying that John Humphrey is a five point lead after what we saw in round number one? Here we are. But Janine's still primed to come back because there's a total of 10 possible points a competitor could get in round at number three. This is the final round. Unless we go to sudden death overtime, here's how it works. Each competitor is going to give us a series of numbers. These numbers can range from one to 15. Each number corresponds to a different corner of movie, trivia, schmodown, inner geekdom know-how. Your first question is worth two points. Your next one's worth three points. Your last one, should we make it that far, is worth five big points. There's no penalty for missing a question. There's no stealing in round at number three. Uh, John Humphrey, because you currently enjoy a five point lead, 18 to 13 over Janine, we're gonna get your three numbers first. So from one to 15, what feels the luckiest? Three, eight, and 14. Three, eight, and 14 for John and for Janine. Two, six, and nine. Two, six, and nine for Janine the Machine. All right, we're going. Hold on. First of all, I'm just going to bring in both the managers here, Boy and Sam. Anything you'd like to say to your competitors before we begin round number three? Start with Sam. Um, Janine, do not let the fact that uh, your opponent got a very, very lucky wheel spin affect you. We are back to multiple categories, which seems to be a big weakness for him. So go get him, Jim. All right, Coy. Uh, John, this is exactly how I thought you'd play. I uh, I see exactly where your math came in in that first round. You've been playing like a champion from the jump. I 
have no lack of faith in your ability in this last round. And I'm so impressed with that pot of knowledge. So let's bring it back for this final round and win it. All right, so we're going to drop coins. Come out. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, here we go. Round number three. going to start with Janine the Machine. Janine, you took category number two. Category number two. Back to the Future. In the first film, George McFly calls Lorraine his what? When he means to say destiny. Density. Density is correct for two points. All right, now in order to tie it and avoid the TKO, you have category number six here, Janine. Category number six. Who said it? Quotes. Which Batman actor said, you see, I'm both Bruce Wayne and Batman. Not because I have to be, now because I choose to be. Val Kilmer. Correct for three points. TKO wow. avoided. And it is now only going to be either between Janine or John, three points, four points are off the table. All right, so here we now get to John Humphrey, Mark. He chose category number two. Uh, he chose category right. number three, three Christian. Yeah, sorry. And, but you are right, it is his two-point question. So his two-pointer, uh, John, this will give you the lead back over Janine, the machine, and your question. In the world of the MCU, Marvel Cinematic Universe, who directed Iron Man 3? Shane Black. Two points. He's back on top, Christian. Okay. So Janine is in this position now. She has her five-pointer. She has to hit it in order to stay in the game and force it back to John. If she hits it, John's got to hit his three and his five. If she misses, John Humphrey has advanced to the next round, and the Quirky Mercs will have themselves a victory, Mark. All right, Janine. Here we go. Category number nine, Janine. And you find yourself once again in the DCEU. Here we go. <clears throat> the DCEU character, Christopher Weiss, is better known as what? Five, four, three. Repeat the question. First one. Sorry, sorry. The DCEU character, Christopher Weiss, is better known as what? Five, four, three, two, one. Repeat the question. Second one. The DCEU character, Christopher Weiss, is better known as what? Five, four, three, two. Repeat the question. This is your last one. The DCEU character, Christopher Weiss, is better known as what? Five, four, three, two. Black mask. And your winner, ladies and gentlemen. John Humphrey. We're looking for Slipknot. Slipknot was the answer. Slipknot. So John Humphrey finds himself with the victory here. Janine, hell of a fight. I'm going to put you in the waiting room for the moment as I bring back uh, Koi Jandrew. Koi, Corky Mercs, you do it. You make the move here. People are going, wait, John Humphrey in the Inner Geekdom Division. Unbelievable. He finds himself down in the first round, has an incredible, just incredible second round, and finds himself with the victory here. 2018. How are you feeling about the Mad Hatter? I I said he was an Air Geekdom player. I said we were a pressure team. I said when it counts is when we come to play. And I knew that he knew this stuff. And I knew as soon as I let the pressure off, I, I knew as soon as I let him play, the game itself would give him the pressure he needed. Uh, every single thing. I could hear where he got the questions he got wrong, wrong, and I knew exactly the ones, like the training he's done, the prep he's done. I'm so endlessly proud of every single member of my team, and they've all done admirably. And this is where I wanted to put John from the moment I recruited him. And I'm so months in the making, a pandemic making this months in the making, and now digitally proud of this man.
Uh, John, I, I got to ask you something here because usually I ask the manager, hey, how nervous were you for your player? But it feels like there was a lot of pressure on you to get a point for the quirky Mercs. So did you feel added pressure from a normal Schmodown just because you knew that you had an entire faction really needing you to get some points today? Oh, yeah. I mean, for me, it was kind of a twofold thing where it's like, I know I got to show up for the faction and, you know, the inner geekdom is a lot more specialized and there are some blind spots that I do have. So I did not come in with, uh, you know, a lot of steadiness in my gate. <laughs> um, but at the same time, everybody on the team has been really supportive and Mara sent me a really nice long sort of uh, just, you know, supportive sort of here's kind of what to mindset to put yourself in and between her and Koi and, you know, his Koi's energy alone, you know, kind of makes me feel like I can do anything. It's like a, it's like a vial of Felix Felicis from uh, Harry Potter, <laughs> you might say. <laughs> well, so, uh, it was very impressive. <laughs> You find you. yourself now, Corey, you guys picked up three big points here. Janine really came to play, put up a hell of a fight there. In the first round, she had you. And then, you know, yeah. who knew that you were going to be that good in, in the Wizarding World besides you, obviously. Yeah. But, I mean, you impressed a lot of people here, and now you find yourself advancing to the next round. And then Koi, uh, you know, John's talking about how your energy alone is infectious and it really gets through to the entire faction. What is it about your energy that you think is inspiring your players to really want to not just win for themselves, but become part of something bigger? Well, from the beginning, I've been saying that I recruited them all because I wanted them to enjoy the game. It's about the enjoyment of both the entrances and the actual gameplay and and how good this feels. and. I recruited each of them for a different reason. What really excites me about this game is I know I'm not good at it, but I know they are. <laughs> so it's really fun for me to, to show the people that are so good at something how they can like hone their very specific craft. Like I'm excited to see people excited and I, I, I live excited as I possibly can. Like even during quarantine, the sun is shining, the world is great, everything could be way worse. I'm thrilled just to have something where this is an internationally recognized sport. When I was in high school, I hid how nerdy I was, and now I'm nerding out internationally and getting to corral a bunch of people who I respect, who I admire, who I cheer on. I get to do this, I'm honored, I'm flattered. So all I try to do is be a mirror to their greatness, corral them, show them their greatness, and give them just that little extra boost. If I can just be just a little bit more and get them there, like it's, it's worth it, it's all worth it. All know. right, well, I wanna say thank you to both Koi and John Humphrey. Koi, big win here today for the Quirky Mercs. Congratulations. Can I say before we leave that uh, I was so aware of Janine's might, and I definitely watched Janine's matches with as I confident as I can be. It's still Janine the Machine, so I was definitely like, okay, it's fine. We got this. We're good. And I also hadn't played Sam, so uh, as, as much as I was bolstering us up, I am honored to have uh, played these guys, and they both were incredible. Yeah. All right, well, once again, guys, thank you very much. Congratulations. All right, going to drop both of these guys out and bring back both Janine the Machine and the Inglorious One, Sam. Janine, I can see it. It's just a little bit, you know, you got to be, it's a little bit disappointing, but you got to be proud of your performance here today. That was something, I mean, first match in the Inner Geek team. You come out, you have nine points in the first. At What tripped you up in the DCEU? Um, I think I should have just stuck with Trek. I think I may be was shooting for MCU and thought I could do better with that, even maybe anything other than DCU. But um, yeah, just something that I thought maybe I could rely on my memory, but it wasn't as strong as I, I thought it was. Sam, any uh, thoughts? I mean, obviously I can tell I know you and I can tell you're super proud of Janine, but I, you know, you told me, you told me she was yeah. going to be really good. Nine points in the first round coming out firing. Do you regret the decision of going uh, second in the second round, or, or you stay for standby? Absolutely not. I know that it's always the correct strategic move, no matter what anyone else wants to argue with me about. And I could not be more proud of Janine. Um, that first round, I think, is, is exemplifies how much stronger she is overall uh, as a, an IG player. And with all due respect to her opponent today, John Humphrey, I think. This match was 100% decided with a very lucky round two wheel spin from John and a very unlucky wheel spin for Janine. It can happen to any player of any strength. Um, you know, like I would never tell you I know all the action movies, but if it lands on Die Hard movies, I'm going to look like John Humphrey did in round two. <laughs> I will. So I will take that challenge. 
that's all it comes down to. So, you know, he obviously knows those movies very well. That was an incredibly fortunate wheel spin for him. And then it was two not great wheel spins for my stellar player, Janine. There were any number of slices on that wheel she could have landed on that would have kept that game absolutely as tight as it was. If not, you know, in, in round one, she probably would have gone five for five and then it really would have come down to round three. And I can't tell you how proud I am of her for nailing her two and three pointers to make sure that she avoided that TKO. Yep. I can't understate how important that was and how, and how great, uh, you know, I felt for her for doing that. Um, and uh, I would, I'm sorry that we won't get to see how well Humphrey would have done in his three-pointer and five-pointer. I think, I think this would have been a real exciting match if round two hadn't been so lopsided on the luck factor. But in no way does that take away from how proud I am of Janine and how kick-ass I know she is in the IG field. And uh, the, the, the only bummer that I feel is I know this was the first round of this tournament, so the tournament is going to take a while but I know that she wants to get back in IG as soon as possible. And I want to see her in that and that in another match. And uh, Hey, maybe uh, Humphrey will play her in a rematch somewhere down the road. That was yeah, my, my question. Sorry, go ahead, Mark. My, my question for Janine would simply be, you know, we, we saw two very capable transfers from uh, either singles or teams into the world of inner geekdom, which is a very tough thing to do. So Janine, as you think about, who you might be facing or what even league you might be facing them in down the road. Is there one league that you're like, no, that's the one that I think I want to specialize in. Is there one league that you really want to have your next match in between all three? Um, I'm kind of excited for teams. We're still kind of talking about how that's going to work out. Um, but I really didn't get to have the run with Ethan that I wanted in teams. And so I would love to kind of focus on that. Um, but I loved putting everything in inner geekdom and really honing in on skills and learning things for that. So I would definitely love to have another inner geekdom match soon. Oh, I'm excited to have you in the inner geekdom division. Cause I think when Sam told me that I was excited, I know how hard you study and I know how yeah. I think that look, every player, your manager included have had these, these seasons where it's just like these bumps and you're like, I can't and you're, you're right there. And then you see people like Sam and, and Ben Bateman, they come back and they're holding belts. And I think that that's in your future too, because that was a hell of a match. You can tell the work that you put in there and, uh, and thank you guys both for, uh, for joining us here today. Appreciate it. Absolutely. All right, Mark. So look, look, this is the standings card as it stands today. So you see how, the quirky mercs they needed these three points it was big but sam said it usual suspects swatting away that tko possible four points for the quirky mercs because janine hit her two and her three forcing uh forcing the out of the tko range yeah the usual suspects doing all they can and uh, you know christian in the case of both these teams going into today's match uh, to use a phrase that you're familiar with we're both grasping at straws for any sort of points they could have managed so hats off to the quirky mercs this is one that if you play it back and and you ran it back if, if you're on the basketball blacktop you say let's run it back you have no idea how it's it's going to, you know, play out. But I, I do anytime you can be like John Humphrey and bring such a specialized knowledge of a particular inner geekdom category to this division, it just means that you're always a threat. So I don't think anybody watching this match today who is in this playoff tournament is going to be taking that guy lightly. No, I agree. I mean, I didn't know what he knew. And he clearly now that's the one thing, though, is that when his next match comes up, you know, you're going to be aware of his Harry Potter knowledge after that particular round. But it also shows that this is something that I was hoping to see in the tournament it was like, OK, well, out of these people that have never played before, who can hang? Well, Janine can hang. We know she's going to be able to hang inside of this division. We know that John Humphrey now is going to be able to hang inside of this division. So the inner geekdom gets stronger by the round and it's going to get stronger and stronger as we head into this match. All these matches matches are going to be fantastic because with every continued advancing it just puts more and more pressure on both the player the faction the manager and you and i just get to sit back and watch the carnage it's a great seat to have absolutely it is mark and it's a pleasure calling this with you the inner geekdom tournament it is underway and man some great fights so far so listen if you guys haven't watched uh the star wars tournament go over to twitch dot tv slash the schmodown go and do that and make sure that you are tuned in here every thursday and friday for the inner geekdom tournament and you want the matches a little early become a schmodown patron today patreon.com slash schmodown and sign up today and you will get the matches early
All right, Mark, once again, my friend, thank you for joining us today for Mark, Baby Carrots Ellis. I'm Christian Harloff, and we'll see you next time.